You know what's the fantastic thing about being last? Everything that you thought you were going to say has already been taken by everybody else. So you stand up here and you stare into all this audience and all these eyes, and you, it's like a look of horror, right? It's like, what am I going to say? So one thing I will tell you is that I'm not going to talk about change. I'm not going to talk about disruption. And I'm not going to talk about transformation. I'm going to try to talk about things that somewhat matter to me and things that may matter to you. I'm going to share things with you which are personal. We're going to share things with you which are professional. And what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this up with where do we believe things are going? Where does the company believe they're going? Where do I believe they're going? And what's going to be a different outcome for the future? Before that, I need my clicker. So, and we're going to play a little game as well. So we're going to talk about cloud infinity. The possibilities of cloud and what it's bringing. And it is infinite. Cloud, as you saw before, could be the fourth industrial revolution. But I don't think it's an industrial revolution. I think it's a revolution of a different kind. This technology and the ubiquitous access around the entire world to every human being will change things everywhere. Now, I said change once, but it's going to be permanent. So you saw that description that you just saw from Jim about the little square. What has the little square done? It's allowed every small merchant in the world to operate like a big merchant. What's it connected to? It's connected to the internet, connected to the cloud. So this is doing something significant in the way we work, the way we behave. Cloud will create infinite possibilities. It will solve things that we have never been able to solve before, and it will solve them at a pace with it, which is unprecedented. Right, take a look for a second, just absorb these numbers. These numbers are completely irrelevant. They're irrelevant. Because as I, we printed this slide and we created this content, it was already obsolete within seconds. Seconds. This year, that industry of cloud that says 216 billion is supposed to grow another 140 billion dollars. Now, here's another interesting thing. How many people in this room believe physical hardware or the data centers you know are going to go away? Show of hands. How many people believe both are going to be here? How many people believe there will be more compute every single year by a factor of four? What does that mean? It actually means that physical compute infrastructure is actually also going up. You're getting more and more processing capability. Everything is moving towards a technology-first motion. Technology drives everything. And I'll tell you, I get, the, I get the privilege at Inger Micro, and it is a privilege to work with extraordinary people. Extraordinary people that have vision, that have drive, that have focus to do one thing, to help our partners succeed in this new economy. And it is a new economy. It's a new way of doing things. And we will all do them differently. But this amazing thing called cloud, you guys know who coined cloud? You guys know the founder of cloud? Scott McNeely, 20 years ago. 20, Scott McNeely was the CEO of Sun. 20 years ago, he talked about everything going into this thing called cloud. Now, you could also call it a mainframe. But 20 years later, you can't imagine the progress we've made. You heard from Victor Baez talking about Azure. You talked about heard from Tarek talk about Amazon Web Services. You heard from Jim talk about Square. Mark talk about what's happening and all the different things he's done with Netflix. All of this is being powered by technology. All these new business innovations, all these new business models are happening at unbelievable speeds. Why? Because technology has become available in unlimited quantities to every person on the planet. And why, why are we optimistic? We're optimistic because look at that number on that one side, mobile. 7.9 billion mobile devices. I actually carry one. I carry this one, right? I have an iPhone. I have another one somewhere, but I've lost it probably. I have a Blackberry. <coughs> Anybody else have a Blackberry? Anybody that has a Blackberry, I'm going to give them a battery. 
Does anybody have a Blackberry in the room? Except for, there's two. <laughs> we're going to give you, keep your hand up. Somebody's going to give you a battery because you're going to need one afterwards. Yep. <laughs> the good thing about Blackberry is Blackberry is actually becoming what? A software company. They're doing business a different way. So software is going to become important. Platforms are going to become more important. You've heard about these things. Cloud's going to be important because it's the underpinning of all the things that are happening. Everything else that you see is an adjacency. And those are opportunities that are being created by your participation in this new thing called cloud. You could call it the cloud economy. The other thing I'm going to talk about a little bit today is what's called ADIA. Hmm. What's this? It's not attention deficit disorder. All digital is awesome. You know who coined that? My 12-year-old daughter coined that. And I'm going to show you a video as well that hopefully inspires you that my 12-year-old daughter did in 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Can anybody in this room create a video in 20 minutes? 20 minutes. And I'm going to show you it's a, produ a production-level video created by a 12-year-old that has been viewed and sent around what's called a school loop by viewed by almost 200,000 people already. Wow. And it's for a cause. It's for a cause. This person has a passion and a belief. It's a new generation of people. These are the things that we have the privilege in our time to be involved in. These are the things that we have a privilege at Inger Micro to help you succeed in, right? Now we're gonna play a little game. We're gonna play the Wheel of Fortune. And we got it to spin. The Wheel of Fortune, let's talk about what's really happening here in terms of mega trends. You see that little number at the top, 205 million emails sent per minute. That number's also wrong, by the way, it's already gone up to 250 million emails sent per minute. Somebody in the audience, take a shot. Whoever answers the question gets one of these really nice, small, microscopic batteries that will charge your phone for an entire recharge. How many emails get sent every five minutes? First person. 1,250,000. Give that guy a battery. How many get sent every five minutes? Almost one for every burst and person on the planet. Please give this guy a battery. How many get sent an hour? Now you get into really big numbers. You don't have to be. <laughs> you don't have to be exact. How many get sent in an hour? How many are getting sent while we're having this discussion? Right, fifteen billion. How many get sent in a day? Say 360, 360 billion get sent in a day. That's mails, guys. How many of those do you actually read, Paul? <laughs> <laughs> All of them. Now, just, just, now take a second and just reflect on those sets of numbers. 360 billion, not million, 360 billion, what I would call useless messages, <laughs> are sent per day that nobody actually reads. Because we actually don't communicate that way anymore. We communicate with things like collaboration. You saw Rowan up here, Rowan talked about collaboration. He showed you the great new products coming from Cisco Spark. Look, that's the way we're gonna go in the future. The old world of what's called static communication, static data centers, nothing will be static. Everything will move into a different direction. Right? Take another look at no reference point here. Take a look at YouTube. That's, by the way, that number's also wrong. Nine million videos viewed per minute. How many an hour? So please give the person the battery. You gotta put your hand up so you can get your prize, right? 540. Now let's, let's think about this for one second, okay? If we take that and we multiply it by the 24 hours in the day, Every person on the planet is watching two videos a day. Is that possible? Well, if that's happening now, and video content is becoming shorter and shorter, and we communicate with video, how many videos do you think we're going to be watching in a year from now? This is a time of what's called infinite. It is being powered by the single greatest technology innovation in history. 
and it's called cloud computing. And it's not only going like, to help you communicate better, it's going to help you work better. It's going to make you more efficient. It's going to make you more productive. It is doing something that nothing else has ever done. The other major revolution that was there was the invention of steel. All right? The invention of steel is the last major thing. We can talk about steam engines, that's after steel and so but it's the invention of steel. While all these things are happening, I want you guys to think about this. I want you to reflect and I want you to think. Think about what's happening to the people. Everyone will or is affected in this new, completely connected economy. Things that you used to do, you don't do anymore. So let me give you just a, a real example from last week when I was traveling with my, my two daughters and my wife and we were on vacation. I bought my kids books. You guys know what books are? How many people know what a book is? <laughs> bought them books. An encouraging thing is that I was able to buy my two daughters books, really cool books, at the airport. I haven't, I haven't seriously, I haven't bought a book in years. I actually bought a book myself as well, a Tom Clancy book. It was really good. And we went to the Turks and Caicos, and unfortunately, my daughter lost the book. It's the book by Simone Biles. She's a, my, my daughter's a competitive gym, gymnast and also a cheerleader. So it's a really important book. She was halfway through the book flying from Los Angeles to Miami. Yeah? It's like, okay, what do you do? Well, in the old days, you tried to get another book. In the new days, you went to your iPad, you launched your, you launched your Amazon Kindle app, and you got her a brand new book. Problem solved. No more problem. Technology. It's a great thing. So let me, let me show you something. Again, this is, these things are very near and dear to my heart. Because think about something that's important. How many people watch babies? How many people have a baby? How many people have kids that are one or two years old? Show of hands. Do your one or two year olds already know how to use an iPad? They know how to find a video and play a video. They're one and two years old. Now, just go back for a second. I know that we're not all that intelligent. Do you remember being able to do that? <laughs> right? We have a generation of little children that are smarter. By the way, I'll tell you one, one other really amazing thing. They're not just smarter. They speak three languages you don't speak. And you will never speak. They speak Alexa. They speak Cortana. And they speak Siri. That's why when you try to talk to your iPhone, you as an adult try to talk to your iPhone, your iPhone doesn't understand you. Because it's not designed for you. It's designed for this new generation that I call Generation Z+. Plus. Generation Z+, Plus operates completely different. They think differently, they consume differently, they act differently, and they are nothing like anybody that's in this room. And this is the kinds of things that Generation Z+, Plus does. Roll the video. I should go on a diet. I'm not beautiful. I'm not skinny enough. I'm so fat. Why am I so ugly? I'll never be as beautiful as long as on TV. Seventy-one seconds, twenty minutes to make, and you change the lives of hundreds of thousands of people. That's the new generation, and all this stuff is being powered by digital. Right? It's about the digital journey that we're on. But just think about it for a second. Take a minute. By the way, the scale that she was sit standing on is a digital scale that connects to an application phone. And the reason she made that video was to help one of her friends. This digital journey has three major components that are happening. 
today. It's around digitalization for employees. It's about digitization of processes. And it's about digitization of customers. Mm. And it's all happening. It's a mega trend. Everything we know that was conventional will become digital. The way we consume things is changing. And here's a really interesting thing. How many people in this room have a gym membership? And now, how many people in this room actually use their gym membership? So here's an interesting thing. Half of you put up your hands for having a gym membership, only the other half put them up for using it, which means half of you have a subscription that you pay for <laughs> that you don't use. That's Maybe they will figure out to make, a way to make a digital gym in the future. We won't have to. So digital is definitely a way that everything's going. The other thing that's happening is that you've heard from many different people. You've heard about what's happening with AI and IoT, artificial intelligence. Maybe you call it lack of intelligence. How many people have a wearable in this room? Right. Does it work yet? How many people's wearables actually work? And how many people have had more than five wearables in the last 24 months? A lot of people start having more and more. What's, what are those devices all doing? What do they do? They collect telemetry. They're collecting information that is being processed by people to make things better. Those telemetry devices, once they process the information, will help us to make people more healthy. Your insurance company will eventually probably pay you to wear a wearable and send them the information. Now, interesting about that, what happens when you combine that with artificial intelligence? You collect the telemetry from a device, it's monitoring your temperature, it's seeing your heart rate, it's seeing if you're exercising, What's it going to be able to tell you next when it collects all the telemetry from seven and a half billion people on the planet? What's it going to be able to tell you when you analyze it? Artificial intelligence, yeah, is going to allow us to predict outcomes before they happen. Artificial intelligence is going to allow us to have self-healing. What's self-healing? Systems will self-heal themselves. Business scenarios will self-heal themselves. This is all being powered by one thing cloud. An interesting thing that's, that you can think about is that, can you imagine, yeah, what will happen just in the next 36 months? By the way, we've been on the cloud journey at Inger Micro for a couple of years, but nobody would have imagined how fast this thing is going and how many adjacent industries are spinning up. You heard Pam talk about it. Specialization, pick somewhere you want to specialize and you want to go deep. But specialization is driving this as well. The one thing that I think that's going to be really interesting is the bottom one, which is called industrial efficiency. So we had, a, we had the, the privilege of meeting with one of our really big partners, Snyder Electric, talking about some of the things they're going to do. And it's an exciting thing that they're going to do in terms of efficiency in data centers, efficiency that they're going to do in industries. But here's another interesting thing. These mega trends are going to do something else. They're going to eliminate waste. Con consider this. If you eliminate all waste on this planet, there's no more waste. You don't make more, I mean, you guys have seen how much food's at this conference? Anybody think we're wasting a lot of food at this conference? Yes. Right, because we don't have the proper demographic information, we don't have the proper information about you to be able to say, you are gonna eat this or not eat this, yeah? <laughs> now Jim, of course, went and picked up his fruit as soon as I talked about the waste that was there. We'll eliminate waste in the food supply. We're going to eliminate waste in, in manufacturing. But how many people think about this? You know you these things called fractional jets and sharing stuff? You know when jets don't fly, do they make money? They're idle, right? They're non-productive assets. Imagine if there's no more non-productive assets. These things are happening. They're being powered by this backbone called cloud. And the other really interesting thing is what I call self-everything, autonomous. Everything will be intelligent. Everything will be able to operate by itself. And let me just give you a couple of really interesting examples. You know what a server bot is? So Japan has an aging population. They're getting older and older and older, okay? And they're happy, by the way. They're old and they're happy at the same time. But the problem is there's not gonna be enough people to care for the old people. So Japan is one of the first countries that starts creating these server bots. They're, they're basically care attenders that are gonna attend to the older people. These are real things, right? We're creating robots that are going to attend us. Do you know that there are robots that are built now 
that can duplicate the recipes of a three Michelin star chef at precision levels. That means it is a robot. You give it the ingredients and it will prepare a three Michelin star dish to the exact level as a three Michelin star. That already exists. Think about one other really interesting thing when you think about this autonomous stuff. How many people think autonomous cars are gonna work? Show of hands. Cars, self-driving cars? Okay. 1.2 million people a year die in traffic accidents. Imagine that nobody dies in traffic accidents because there's no more traffic accidents. If you believe this, I'll tell you why I believe this is gonna happen. <coughs> Your autonomous car is a set of sensors collecting telemetry in real time. It's collecting telemetry from in front of you, behind you, side to side on either side of you, and probably bottom and above you. The car has more eyes than you have because what you can't do is drive a car like this. And that's what all these autonomous things will do. And they will learn. They are learning constantly and they're collecting that information. So think about this. You're not gonna have to drive your car. It's gonna be autonomous. Your car won't be idle. Because in 25 years, they're saying that there will be no cars that are really owned. Hmm. They're all gonna be connected to one really big thing. It's called the cloud, yeah? This is a really interesting thing because as you go through these journeys, you gotta think about who's the person you're trying to get to the destination. So if you create high degrees of complexity in the things that you offer to the customer experience and the customers and to yourself, you have very little. You have these things that are called non-usable things, waste. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to actually, at this point in time, ask my young colleague, Javi. Javi is the founder of Concerto. Right? He's the one who built this entire orchestration process with a group of people, young people, in Seville, Spain. And he's actually going to show you something a little bit different. Yesterday, we showed you creating a server. He's going to show you, in the simplest form, how he is going to build a data center. He's going to build a data center in multiple countries, multiple geographies, with multiple hyperscale players, and he's brave enough to do it live. Okay, Javi, over okay, to you. Okay, well, <laughs> thank you very much, Nimesh. So actually, uh, I'm actually gonna do it live. I hope it works. I hope I don't have the demo effect, plus my hands are a little, a little bit cold because the room is pretty cold. So um, what we're gonna do is, uh, we're gonna actually build a virtual data center and we're gonna add capacity to that virtual data center. So to do this, we're gonna leverage a technology that's called Kubernetes. Uh, I don't know how many of you guys know what Kubernetes is. A raise of hands. Okay, so at least we, we got a couple of people who know what it is. So Kubernetes is a tool that allows you to create a virtual data center and to add dynamically capacity to it, okay? So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna deploy this virtual data center and I'm gonna deploy in different cloud providers, as well as Nimesh said, and with different hyperscalers. So let's go on and let's do that. Okay, so one of the things that that to do this is if you had to build your own data center, it would actually take you a couple months to get the approvals, to actually get the physical layout and to actually build it. To do it in the cloud is actually very complicated. What we're doing right now with Concerto, if I had to do it with, without this tool, it would take me literally a week. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add capacity. In this case, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna deploy in the US, I'm gonna use AWS, and I'm gonna deploy it in Virginia. So you're, you're able to see all the specific data centers that all of the hyperscale providers have. Yes. Okay. So we're going to add a capacity there. So we did it in the US. Now we're going to do it in a different hyperscaler in a different region. So this time I'm going to do it in Europe. I'm actually going to do it in Azure. And I'm going to do it in Azure. I'm going to do it in, in Western Europe. And I'm going to deploy it there. And actually we're going to build this virtual data center across the entire globe using different cloud providers. So imagine you, from your desktop, will be able to build a virtual data center all around the entire world. By the way, he's gonna do this in five minutes. So as, as we're talking, I'm gonna deploy this one, the one in Asia, I'm gonna uh, deploy it in Azure because Azure has a good Asia data center and now I have to use the last region, which is Latin America. So I'm gonna deploy in Latin America and I'm gonna do it in Amazon and here. So, so far we haven't sent technicians on planes to all these different places. 
He's sitting at his sofa. He's very, very comfortable. And he's doing something that used to take months or years to do. So in a couple of minutes, well, actually it usually takes about 10 to 15 minutes, depending on the hyperscaler, we'll have an infrastructure very similar to the one that we have right here that I did this morning. So, so now think about this. If you're able to deploy technology this quickly and you're able to utilize it this quickly, what happens to your ability to execute things? So what do you think's next? You're going to add some more providers into this? Yes, we're going to, right now, the, uh, we're going to, uh, Right now, it's working with Azure. In a couple of months, it's going to be working with AWS. And we're going to also put IBM Bluemix. And also, if you have your own private cloud, we're also going to be compatible with uh, VMware and OpenStack. So you'll be able to add your own components as well. So I think that's, that's, that's the demonstration of how technology is, is innovating, how it's driving a different way that we're going to consume. Thanks, Javi. Thank Round you very much, Amesh. So from all these different things that are happening, I think this is what I believe, right? It's my belief it can also be totally wrong. Right? So hopefully I'm not totally wrong, but I'm willing to take the risk to be wrong, to fail, to try something different. What I believe is that we will go into a society about consumption, not ownership. Right? And it's really interesting. We, I have this conversation with a lot of different people. Look, there's a big difference between the people in this room. How many people in this room own a house? Yeah. How many people in this room own a car? Okay. Ten years from now, will you, does it, let me ask you, do you think it makes sense to own a car? How many people think it makes sense to own a car? <laughs> Not a lot of people that actually own cars think it makes sense, right? Can you think about this? Millennials don't necessarily want to own cars. Right? They use cars when they need them through riding services. But then you have autonomous cars in the future, They'll just drive. We already consume more and more services. That means we are moving into a mode where we don't buy, we fractionally use and we share. So what I, what I think is that we will see in the next five years unprecedented amounts of capital, money, freed up to be used in other places. And the trend that we're seeing is we will become a consumption-based economy, not an ownership-based economy. That means sharing will mean everything. The other major outcome is this. Everything we do today and we think about is a transaction. Buy, sell, okay? The future is not about transactions, it's gonna be about flows. Flows of information, flows of commerce, and I'll give you some examples, these are flows. The interesting thing about flows is they're very difficult to intercept, you can bend them, but they're very difficult to stop unless you do something very, 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 let's say, intrusive. Think about a couple of things. This is a really interesting one. A flow, your meals for the week. How many people know Blue Apron? Pretty interesting thing, right? Blue Apron's amazing because if you're a family of two people, a Blue Apron box will show up at your house and it's a really cool box. It's an environmentally friendly box. It will show up at your house. It'll have all the ingredients prepared for your meals. You'll have absolutely no waste. And you can prepare a meal in 30 minutes. And it's a, a really good meal. That's becoming a flow of your consumption of food. Anybody use Trunk Club here? Trunk Club? OK, Trunk Club's where I get my clothes. They actually send me a bunch of clothes in the box. I keep the ones I want, and I get rid of so I don't shop. My flow is my wardrobe. These things are changing radically. Now, but imagine this. In these flows, you keep what you want, you discard the other things that you don't need. So this is something that's definitely a major thing that's happening. The other major thing that's going to be really important for us as a society is cybersecurity will become enormously important. Right? Your personal data, your life, your family's life, because everybody if you can't steal physical goods, because ownership doesn't matter anymore and consumption does, what are you going to do? You're going to start to go after the data that's going to have the value. And let me, think, let me give you a couple of really interesting points. The market's estimated to be $1 trillion. But before I get there, think about this. You guys know about ransomware? Who knows about ransomware? Anybody here experienced ransomware so far? Experienced it? Pleasant experience or bad experience? <laughs> Bad experience, right? 
Depends on what's, as, as, as my colleague says, depends on what side of the equation you're on, right? This is when somebody takes ransom of your data. They encrypt it, you're stuck, and you pay them. Now, here's a really interesting thing. The one thing I'm gonna, I, I want you to all do before you leave here is if you're not using cloud backups to back up your clouds, make sure you use them. Because you, you still need a backup of your data somewhere else. Otherwise, you can lose it. This thing is a really interesting trend that's happening. That means that we're going to be ransomed for data. The other thing that's really interesting is that these things called cyber warfare. These are outcomes of all the things that are happening. You guys have heard of cyber arsenals? Not a munitions arsenal, a cyber arsenal, where they collect all kinds of different attacks, so they have pre-planned, pre-programmed attacks to go after governments. May or may not have happened during the US election. We don't know if it happened or not, yeah? But those are some huge things that are moving in one specific direction. We're not talking about transformation. We're not talking about disruption. We're not talking about change. These things are reality. Right? I think those were words that were the past. I think these are words of what are going to be the future. You heard? All this reverts to one place, this new thing called the connected economy. The connected economy, where the customer experience is the most important thing, where teamwork between the people in this room Collaboration, leveraging multiple skills, and working with people that have vision will drive our common success. And that's where we at Inger Micro continue to invest as an organization. We continue to invest and innovate with you. We continue to adapt our business, and in sometimes radically reinvent our business to assist our partners and society to prosper with the cloud. With that, I'd like to thank everybody that's in the room. And I'd like to thank a couple of people specifically who have gone through very heavy lifting to make this an other successful conference. I'd like to thank Christy Coleman from our US marketing organization and the entire Inger Micro marketing team. I'd like to thank my, my AV team, especially Stav, who works with me tirelessly because the one thing I do is modify this till the very end. I'd like to thank Duncan, Gabriel, Javi, of course. So Javi, Javi built this until 4 o'clock in the morning. So Javi doesn't really like to sleep. He's from Europe. And I said, I said could you actually make this really happen in real time? He goes, I'll do it. So you saw Javi did this. I'd like to thank Javi because he, he needs to get some sleep. The entire product management team of Inger Micro who put together all these tremendously great products for you. These new things are gonna help you in your toolbox to do more with more. Mark Surratt, Alberto, and the entire Santander team. We have 150 people in Santander, Spain as well, that have helped us develop all these new con connectors for you. Oleg and the engineering team from Moscow. So we have a big office also in Moscow. So we actually know a little bit about Russia, by the way, just to let you know. Yeah. <laughs> and the entire GTM team for getting all the different customers here from the world. And most of importantly, Thank you for your trust, thank you for your confidence, and thank you for your business with Inger Micro. Thank you.